Hello friends, my name is Swara and welcome to Myth Me. This is a channel where I explain to you amazing, interesting mythology and you understand them better than you would understand those boring history books. So let's start with the Greek mythology since it's very famous. Before we start with the creation of the world, which we are going to cover today, I would like to introduce you to some Greek gods. Now, many of you know these gods, but I'm just going to introduce them. Zeus is the god of the sky, Poseidon is the god of the sea, Ares is the god of war, Aphrodite is the goddess of love, Hera is the goddess of women, Demeter is the goddess of harvest, Athena is the goddess of strategy and wisdom, Apollo is the god of the sun, music and poetry, and Artemis is the god of hunting in the moon, Hephaestus is the god of fire, Hermes is the messenger god, Dionysus is the god of wine, and finally Hades is the god of the underworld. Now, these are all the main gods. These came into being later. The gods that I'm going to mention now are the primordial gods. And they're very interesting, but we'll discuss them another time. So, let's begin with the creation of the world. The moment you have been all waiting for. Let's begin. I'm so excited to explain this to you. Okay. Now, how was the world created according to the Greeks? Let's begin. In the beginning, the first thing that existed was chaos, a dark, gloomy mist, as you can see here. This is chaos. This is all that existed millennia ago, before the world was created. Now, eventually, chaos got less chaotic, and it created the earth, and along with it, a living personality. Of course, it created the living personality. She was the earth goddess. She was the grandmother of all the gods that I have mentioned above, right? So she is the mother of all. Um, every creature that came into existence, she is the mother. So eventually, Gaia got bored and she wanted to live with someone, a companion. So chaos made a sky, a beautiful protective dome over the earth to protect it from all the calamities that come from space like meteors. Now, when he created the sky, you guessed it, he created another personality. This god named himself Uranus, which is um, equivalent to Uranus, the planet which was named after him. So... Uranus could take a human form and he visited Gaia as they had fallen in love with each other. Of course, they had. They were the only male and female species alive. So they had to fall in love. Or else, how would we be created? So he visited Gaia um, many times from the sky to the earth um, because he could take a human form. Uh, Uranus only wore a loincloth and his skin on the day was blue with a cloudy pattern. Oh my god, I remember this. Like it's like a translucently blue and has this beautiful clouds on it, like this white cloud. It's a very beautiful scene. Um and at night it was dark with stars and a moon. In some pictures, you might see him holding a zodiac wheel to represent all the con constellations of the night. So this was the description of Uranus and um Gaia, and let's see what happens later. So, Chaos decided to make other gods because he was pretty confident about them now. So, then water flowed out of the mist of Chaos and filled the holes and cracks in the earth. This formed the first seas and the rivers. The god of the seas was, was Potmus. Now, you may be confused because above I mentioned that the god of the ocean was Poseidon. But Poseidon came into existence uh, because not because a Potmus was Potmus was in, was technically his uncle. You know, it's a long relation with gods. It's just that they will just marry whoever they want. That's why in the future Zeus marries a sister or Hera. It's a pretty crazy collection. It will drive you crazy. I swear. But anyways. Like the sky, chaos decided to create a dome under the earth for 
and in no reasons. Um, this form the darkness, the pit of evil, right? You see, it's just black nothingness. So, now let's discuss the birth of the cyclope, the hundred handed ones, and the elder cyclope. These were some of the children that Gaia gave birth to. Gaia gave birth to the titans, which was which were taller and bigger than normal children. She then gave, they were actually pretty pleased with themselves. The couple was actually very happy about their first children. They look beautiful. Well, not exactly beautiful, but they look like normal children, just a little taller and heavier. So, then she gave birth to the elder cyclone. And well, they were pretty ugly. I, I swear to God, they, were, they, they defied the word ugly. They had one eye in the middle of their forehead, as you see here. This one's smiling. So I, I don't know if this is crazy, but I, I feel pity for him. You know? He's cute, okay? Like, I would not like to have him as my child, but you know, we feel bad for him. So he was so innocent, but then Uranus hated them. Then came the hundred handed one, who, as the name suggests, had a hundred hands on their chest, the sea urchin spine, and fifty heads smooshed together on their shoulders. Well, Uranus is pretty disappointed in these children and he really, really hated them. So, like you see here, he got chained, made up of pure darkness, and he tied these guys up and threw them into the Tartarus, where they fought through the illusion for centuries, but could not get out. But they were going to be freed in the near future. Now, let's see ahead. Who are Nyx and Himera? Well, unfortunately, it was for Gaia and Uranus, Tartarus and Portnus personified, and they fell madly in love with Gaia. But they knew that there was nothing they could do about it because she was the wife of the lord of the universe. They would bring chaos, give birth to a girl named Nyx, the embodiment of the night. And this may sound weird, but Nyx, on her own, gave birth to another girl, Himera, the embodiment of the day. So night and day, mother and daughter stayed along with Uranus in the sky. Let's look ahead. Um, so... How did Uranus fall? How was his end? Now, Gaia was furious that Uranus had just tossed away his kids like that. She called all of the titans, which were 12 of them, by the way. And she told them that one of them needed to step up, get the courage, and kill that douche ever for father. So none of them were up for the job because they were scared. Uranus was the Lord of the cosmos, what could they do? They were nothing but small little orphans against him. But Kronos, the youngest one of them, also the most ignored one because his mother and his father did not know him, he decided to do it to gain the respect and attention of his mother and his sibling. Gaia called Uranus to dinner and lured him right into a trap. So this is a plan that Kronos made. So Uranus was pretty dumb being the lord of the cosmos. He could not understand that this was a trap because he and Gaia had been fighting for a lot of time. And when he came for dinner, um, Gaia asked him to sit on the couch with her and Uranus walked up and sat there like a normal person would. But then what he did not know was that Kronos, along with four of his siblings uh, who were helping him doing the job, um, they, his siblings, wrestled him to the ground and Kronos cut him in little pieces. And, okay, so this is some extra information, but the blood of the gods is, is, is like... It has a lot of value. It's pretty, it was pretty amazing. Um, this created a few more gods later. Um, this will be discussed later, but then uh, Uranus's blood fell everywhere. 
uh, all across the world and um, it fell in the ocean and that's how a goddess came to the know i will discuss it later but it's just a it's just an easter egg for you just to let you know what happened with the blood and also the blood is known as ichor like i c h o r ichor uh, that's what the blood is called and um, this fell everywhere that it's splattered everywhere and this gave birth to more personality this is actually pretty cool this, this is what discussing in the next session so gaia as she had promised named chronos lord of the cosmos yes so when she told them that they needed to kill their douchebag of father she also told them that who, whoever would do it and would succeed she would name him the lord of the cosmos him or her and that sounds like a pretty de- good deal chronos since he was very power hungry and well he wanted to be the lord of the cosmos so he went ahead and killed his father which is what we call in today's world psycho right so this is how the world got created and how and how chronos started his rule now this is an amazing story and i hope you guys enjoyed this and in the next video we are going to discuss how these gods came into existence all of these gods how they were created these are like the main god i will tell you how these were created it's a very good story it's a very excellent story and um, i i really hope to look forward to that video because it's really going to be a good one and um, i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did share this with your friends and family to let them know, know how amazing greek life is i mean it's interesting all this mythology is really it really fascinates you know all the history lovers will love this so i really hope you enjoy this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel like this video if you really enjoyed it and i'll see you on my next video bye guys